Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and I get asked a lot of questions about emulsifiers. What's the best type to use? How much should you use? And how do you pick from the many emulsifiers out there? Well, let me start by saying there's no one perfect emulsifier that's going to fit all of your formulation needs. One of the first selection criteria you will have is your brand philosophy. How natural or green does your emulsifier selection need to be? This can, in some cases, narrow your selection somewhat, although there's still loads of naturally derived emulsifiers out there for a range of formulation types that you can pick from. The next big selection criteria is, are you creating an oil and water emulsion or a water and oil emulsion? There's different emulsifiers that will suit each of these emulsion types. So that's a big selection criteria that you'll need to be sure of when making your emulsifier selection. The next thing to consider is how much dispersed phase do you have? So the more dispersed phase you have in your emulsion, generally the higher the input of the emulsifier that you will need. Which brings me on to another question I get asked a lot, and that is how much emulsifier should I use? Well, it depends on the emulsifier grade you're using. So different emulsifiers will require different inputs in different emulsion types. So it's really best to look to your supplier's details and information specific to the material you're working with. Just be careful, especially in oil and water emulsions, that you don't use too much emulsifier. Otherwise you can end up with excess white rubbing time or a soaping effect. And that's where the product is applied and takes a really long time to be rubbed in and you get a lot of white foaming microfoam on the skin during application. Another thing that might impact your decision is supply. How readily available are the emulsifiers you want to use from the sources that you have access to in the typical order quantities that you're going to want. For example, there's no point using an emulsifier that you might need to buy in 20 kilo bags if you really only want to use five kilos of it. Unless of course you can split packs with others using our cosmetic raw materials for small brands Facebook group split pack offerings. Another selection criteria is the type of form you're trying to create. So if you want to build really viscous, creamy emulsions, you're going to need to use more waxy emulsifiers. Those waxy emulsifiers is what helps build viscosity and body in your creams and even your lotions. If you want to create runny products like milks, for example, then liquid emulsifiers are fine to use. And if you want to create water and oil emulsions, well, these types of emulsions are generally very thick anyway. So you tend to want to use some liquid emulsifiers to help keep that viscosity down. If you want to create cream gels, then polymeric emulsifiers are the best type of emulsifier to use. I've got a video specifically on polymeric emulsifiers so that you can learn more about them too. Some of you might also be familiar with the concept of HLB, hydrophile lipophile balance. And this is a scoring system that cosmetic chemists use to determine the typical activity of an emulsifier when it's put into an emulsion. If your emulsifier has a score of nine or above, it will typically be used to stabilize and form oil in water emulsions. If that HLB value is eight or below, it will typically form and stabilize water in oil emulsions. So there's lots of things to consider and there's no one perfect emulsifier that's going to suit all options. Another couple of things you could look for is what else will that emulsifier do? There's a lot of emulsifiers now that will add to the sensory enhancement of a formula, making them feel silkier or nicer on application to boost hydration over eight hours or more and also protect against transepidermal water loss. So look for that supportive data if you wanna boost your product claims and performance by using those types of emulsifiers. And of course, there's one big element of selection we haven't mentioned yet, and that is price. 
So you might find you need to source a few different types of emulsifiers. See which will work best in your formulas. See which will fit your minimum order quantities and pricing structure and of course the impact they have on the viscosity and sensory aspects of the formula as well as any other supportive claims or benefits they might bring to your formulation. Of course formulators have favourites to use and you'd see me use a lot of the same types of emulsifiers in various formulas and I also provide you with a lot of videos where new or innovative emulsifiers help me solve a formulation issue or challenge. So you might need to select a more innovative material like one I've used in various videos to solve your formulation issue. Well I hope this has helped you understand why there isn't just a simple one size fits all when it comes to emulsifiers. I get asked a lot about preservatives too and I've got a video you'll enjoy on a preservative overview and selection as well where I talk about some of the reasons that you might select different preservatives, what you should look for and also how much you should use. I hope you found this information useful. Please give the video a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.